Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and we have more Cobra Convergence 7. We have another Cobra Convergence 7 presenter here. Uh, it is my privilege to uh, talk to the host of Chaplain's Assistance Motorpod. Gary, could you introduce yourself, tell the audience who you are and what you do? Hello, my name is Gary. I am the host of the Chaplain's Assistance Motorpod. Uh, I host a podcast that is all about my life in collecting, in particular G.I. Joe. Um, just take a minute to review, you know, talk about what's going on in like G.I. Joe news and what I've gotten in, you know, little quick things of like classified or, um, other military inspired toy lines, but every episode is a review of a G.I. Joe toy playset trailer from the G.I. Joe, a real American hero toy line, um, from 1982 to present and concentrating really on the three and three quarter and four inch toy lines. That is awesome. That's that's uh, right in my wheelhouse. And I have to say, Chaplin's Assistance Motor Pod is one of the, the more clever names for a show that, that I've heard. So congratulations. That's that's a gem. Thank um, you. Uh, but thanks for, for being in Cobra Convergence um, this year. Uh, so um you've had how have how long have you been running your show uh so that hopefully everybody will check it out there will be a link um in the description of this video to to your uh to your podcast uh so how long have you had it running uh, about two years now uh I actually just celebrated the second anniversary as of this recording and uh you know it's 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 been interesting you know doing it doing it alone uh with with the occasional guests so it's uh it's you know it's it's definitely a different experience than uh, what I used to be when I used to guest on my uh, my friend's show. Uh, so uh, so you used to guest. Now you are solo. Now you're doing, but you have guests sometimes. Uh, what kind of sometimes? Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, what guests have you had in the past? All right. Um, other fellow podcasters, uh, Gia Joberg, uh, notably Stephen. Uh, I've had Order of Battle Pods, Jason. Anything Joe's. Greg Engel, and yeah, it's basically it so far. I have a couple other guests lined up for uh, in the near future. So, you know, it's just it's it's fun to have a conversation sometimes as a podcast, but um, doing it by myself and having just a way to regularly or semi regularly produce episodes is uh, a good format to have, um, just to get my GI Joe fix going for myself and for others as well. I, I love all those folks. Uh, it's, it's awesome that you had them on, and and congratulations on uh, the two year milestone. That's that's really awesome. Thank um, you. So uh, talk to us. So hopefully everybody will be checking out um, your show right after they watch this. Um, what should folks expect to to find? Like, talk, uh, walk us through like what a typical episode might be uh, on Chaplin's Assistance Motor Park. Typical episode is really you know, what my life of collecting has been since the last episode. So that's how I begin every episode. You know, it's good to have a formula. So if it's been eBay, you know, selling or buying, if it's been Mercari, you know, buying, you know, mail calls, you know, G.I. Joe classified, you know, if I get something new in, um, and it's also comics. So if something comes up in the world of comics or, you know, other toy lines, you know, with all these Kickstarters, um, going on for O-Ring Revival. Um, that's really the the opening segment is my place to talk about that. And it's very varied. So it could be me complaining about just a bad experience to praising a update in six inch form of a G.I. Joe classified figure. So it that's that ranges the gamut. And then the other thing, the second half is the review. And that's usually thematically timed with a bad, thematically themed with a bad pun in the in the title of the show. So dad humor is very <laughs> welcome here. Bad puns are very welcome here. And uh, so, but then that's, I do a, you know, an audio review for, for the show. So this way it gives people a, a feel of what I can do. I try my best to explain it to put the picture in the person's head, you know, the mind's eye, and also just try to provide a unique perspective or anecdote or, you know, something off the cuff, 
you know, because a lot of times I have notes, but you never know when you're when I'm actually holding it during the the recording. Uh, I might have something new just pop into my head at that moment and verbal diarrhea, you know, get it out there, get in the cosmos and uh, just put, you know, the good and the bad out there for everybody to hear. That, that, that does happen sometimes, no matter how well you plan, sometimes when you're just looking at it and talking about it, something something pops up that you ha- it hadn't occurred before. So it's a, it's, a, it's a bit of an aha moment. And I love the titles. I love the episode title. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah, it's, it was partially inspired by you. Um, I felt that, you know, nobody was talking about like doing full toy reviews um, on podcast format, you know. I am not usually a YouTube person um, for reasons, but I felt that the audio format allowed me a way to have something scheduled and regular um, as I could do it. And, you know, I started this, you know, towards the tail end of the pandemic, um, you know, getting my stuff together, getting, uh, you know, figuring, you know, things out like a name for a podcast, which is probably the anybody that has a YouTube channel or podcast will say the name is probably the hardest thing to come up with. Yeah. But then, I still uh, haven't come up with a good one. So the, you, you, you hit the ball uh, out of the park first try. That's fantastic. No, it's yeah. It's yours is fine. I love it. It's uh, it reminds me of my favorite version of Cobra commander. So it's, you know, it's, you know, and I started it and it just worked out and, you know, it's, it's going on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so uh, obviously you had some knowledge of G.I. Joe before you started this podcast. Um, and a lot of us uh, started with G.I. Joe, um, you know, way back as youngsters. Uh, talk to uh, talk to us about um, your your earliest experiences with G.I. Joe. What first got you interested? Uh, first got me interested, I have to admit, was the cartoon. So that was September of 85 when that first mini, the, well, the third miniseries uh, came out and I was five years old and I was watching it. It was, uh, it was at 7 a.m. every morning uh, before I went to school. And that Christmas, I got my first Joe's, um, you know, and then I was basically hooked for the next nine years. So Nine, it was, it's a pretty good run. That's a yeah, pretty was, good run. Well, do you remember? <laughs> do, you, do you remember your first Joe's? Yes, because it, uh, it was a moray, a ferret. So the moray had the lamprey, and then I had shipwreck, barbecue, flint, bareness, and torch. That's a pretty good set. I got to say, that's a, a that's a good start. Good Christmas haul. Yeah. I, no, yeah, absolutely. In nineteen eighty five. Uh, a lot of folks consider that to be the pinnacle. That's that's a great time to start as well. That's awesome. Um, so nine years, uh, uh, that's a pretty good run. Um, even some of uh, the diehards from the early 80s can't say that we stuck with it that long. That's, that's, that's impressive. That's impressive. It, it helped that I played by myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was definitely the last kid playing with G.I. Joe's in my, in my school. Um, I was trading my brother's Star Wars figures that he had left. He had moved out of the house. I was trading them for other G.I. Joes because kids had aged out. And um, I built a diorama in my parents' basement, and it's nothing fancy. You know, what a 12-year-old does is they find a sheet of plywood, they put it on sawhorses, and your dad just allows you that space in the basement. And then I didn't have the headquarters, so um, remember Constructs? that I would build Mm -hmm. the headquarters out of constructs. Nice. So it was a lot of Cobra attacking the base and, you know, you could break it apart and uh, you know, and that's, and I kept with it because I kept reading the comic book. So, you know, it it evolved from the cartoon to the comics and I stayed with it to the very end. Wow. Oh, that, that is awesome. And that's, uh, that's a a great uh, childhood memory. I think, I think a lot of us can relate to relate to that. So, uh, some of us stuck with it longer than others, but now you are in it again. Now, as an adult, you got a podcast about it. Uh, I can see some uh, GI Joe toys behind you there. Uh, so, uh, at what point did you start to get back into it and start get inter- get interested in it again? Well, um, 2001, the Devils Do series launched, so I was just finishing up my back issues. 
So I had, I was, you know, and when I say I'm like, I'm collecting at that point in time, I'm, you know, things in the twenties and thirties that were just getting hard to find. Like issue 22 was hard to find 38 for one reason was the, my, my, uh, the last one, but, um, you know, but then I discovered GI Joe issue number two on the shelf, you know, I wasn't in a comic books. I had laps from comic books by that time. And I got back in the comics and I never stopped the comics after that. And then, you know, the toy line really started with the 25th anniversary. You know, I wasn't really big into the big shoulders era and I really wasn't like when you had the two packs and the three packs, it was just, you know, wasn't, it was enticing, but just not enough at that point in my life. And, you know, all things considered that point in my life, it's a good thing. I probably didn't collect toys. So 2007, I got my first GI Joe for the first time in at that point, 14 years. Um, last figure I bought was 93. And uh, I remember, and I still have that. That's my, the winter, winter gear snake eyes with the Quinn necklace. And then it was a slippery slope from there and it was like dominoes and it just accelerated um to the point where you know you lie to yourself and you know i remember 2011 i'm telling my now wife uh yeah i'm only collecting the ones i had as a kid and then it and then it just you know my son was born in 2015 and then it's like i had a little i had to spend a little more time in the house so then it's just like it just snowballed from there and uh, you know really doing things that you know with adult money i only could have i never could have even dreamed as a kid yeah it it, it starts that way doesn't it we all uh, promise ourselves that the collection will stay within certain parameters but the first time you get one that's outside of those parameters you know all bets are off uh so uh so welcome welcome to the to the uh the addiction i guess i should say um, so, uh, a couple of years ago though, you, uh, you started your podcast. What inspired you to do that? Well, I had been on Pine of Comics as a guest, uh, off and on for a couple of years at that point. And, uh, it was frustrating because my schedules don't jive with the host schedule. So it's like, you know, our obligations kept getting in the way. So, and then he's like, well, you can figure something out. And I was doing some YouTube videos um for him on occasion like trying to do one a month and then you know you know i was trying to be you know get guest on cobra convergence i did a couple submissions for the fan submissions and thank you and, for doing that no thank you for having these and then you know it was just like the stars aligned two years ago um my son had gotten to a point where he didn't need 100 percent constant attention i was able to start pulling away and having a little more free time you know the pandemic had freed up a lot of work time, which is now unfortunately all back, but back yeah. then. So, so I had a little more time for creative juices and it was just, you know, it just felt right. And, you know, I wanted to do more. I wanted to celebrate collecting. I wanted to, you know, really do more than just acquire. I wanted to share and, is just like this was the way I felt I could do it. Um, I hadn't really developed a rapport for anybody for like you know a second host or whatever. So it was just like, okay, what am I going to do as a solo act? And uh, I just felt like this was you know there's a lot of guys that talk about all aspects of GI Joe. So I figured I looked for an aspect that really wasn't being, you know, you know I'm a niche of a niche in the podcasting world. So it's so it's just I felt like there was an opening and I'd go for it. Well, we need those niches, uh, and it is it, it's uh, it is fun to collect and share, isn't it? I mean, doesn't that it, for me at least it feels like it enhances your experience as a collector if you're able to share that with uh, with someone. So, yeah, definitely, it's like social media, you know, has helped a lot. Um, I really wasn't big into social media until my friend's podcast, and you know, now you know when I share an episode. You know, one of the things I do to try to promote every episode is I try to take a picture of the toy in play or, you know, do something artistic, you know, just to, you know, just to make it, you know, I try to tell a story with the picture, 
which may or may not relate to the actual review, but you know, the toys in there. So it's a promotional image, but it allows me to, you know, you know, the social media aspect of interacting and just meeting a lot of fellow collectors, you know, with direct messages or, you know, Hey, you know, I heard this, you know, really, you know, this really brought back memories to, you know, you know, one guy didn't like my review and I said, Oh, I'm sorry. You feel that way. That's, I, I understand why you feel that way. And I meant no disparaging towards your experience with that toy. And I even say that these are all toys. These were all meant to be played with. And one thing I learned, you know, even as you blow away my favorite version of Dr. Mindbender, um, you, you know, you realize that that's somebody's favorite toy. And I try to remember that too. That, that is, that's something that you discover after you do this for a little while is that no matter how weird it is, that was somebody's favorite. Uh, except for the Cobra Rat. I'm pretty sure the Cobra Rat was nobody's favorite. But other than that, every one of them was uh, was somebody's favorite. And uh, so, yeah, that, you know, we do what we do. But, you know, there's got to be some respect for folks that really love this stuff. So that's uh, I think that's important. Yeah. And, um, the, and the other thing, too, is like even with the Cobra Rat, you know, there's an engineering uh, and, de- and design process behind that that brought this toy to life. And as somebody in, I have a manufacturing background, so I want to make sure that, you know, people were, you kind of got to somewhat respect the, the, the fact that these things were brought to market. You know, there wasn't a, an idea. There was a guy that said, Hey, this would be make a toy. I'm not using the fun adjective <laughs> <laughs> always, but there's, but there's but there was an idea to bring it to market that this would be something that would appeal to children um because i really feel that especially the real american hero era you know it is an absolute gem of a toy line and that's to me that's what's important it's meant for play and you know you really can't disparage that part of any of these i you know we have our ones that we like to pick on cobra rat uh, but you know, but they're but they were there for a reason. Yeah, uh, um, the uh, uh, we collect them now, but all of them were designed to be opened up and played with. That's that was the market then. So uh, it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, collectibles now, sure, but these were toys, and a lot of the ones that are in our possessions now, they they've seen a lot of battles. So uh, uh, that's I think that's a great thing to keep in mind. Um, so, um, Cobra Convergence, um, uh, once again, uh, Chaplain's Assistance Motor Pod link will be in the description of this video. Uh, go, uh, click on that link as soon as you're finished watching this, uh, Cobra Convergence this year, we are recording this of course, well in advance of Cobra Convergence. Uh, so there's still a little bit of time. Uh, do you have now by the time people see this though, there wouldn't be any spoilers, but, uh, have you... Uh, given some thought to what you might do for your event presentation. Yeah, I have. I actually have it right here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You had it. it was, That's awesome. It, and it was so easy to get this boxed rather than hunt a loose, complete example. Um, and it's, I love the spy, the spy troops line because they're cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I am a frugal man. I am a man of me- meager means, but sure. it, but for doing a review for any of my reviews, because I want to do a picture of it. I want something complete. So in case there is an aspect of it, I want to capture on camera or experience so I can talk about it. You know, I like to have the whole thing, you know, um, the famous, the famous, one that I did, I did a review about a year ago of the GI Joe hammer. I have a broken antenna. And I mentioned that in the review as is like, I am not going to hunt down an unbroken antenna. I'm not going to pay the money for one with an unbroken antenna. That is what it is. These 1990, 1991 GI Joes are made of disintegrating plastic. <laughs> and that's just the experience you're going to have with this. 
Uh, yeah, well, th sometimes the broken parts are part of the experience, and uh, the the person checking out the review needs to know that too. Um, I can't, I don't remember how many uh, hammers that I had to get uh, to get one complete one because yeah, they just like they're made out of rock candy that just crumble. Yeah, it's. I think it was four. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, I think so. I, yeah, and mine was three. I had three. Congratulations. <laughs> well done. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's a luck of the draw on that thing. It's it's really rolling the dice. Yeah. Um, but and actually when you to go back to an earlier question, um, I've kind of a little bit moved away from it because of just my life. But one of the impetuses for my podcast was fixing G.I. Joe vehicles and play sets. And I don't do it at the rate that I was doing it because again, life, but I was fixing, you know. I fixed whales. Um, I've talked about fixing the whale on the podcast, night ravens, uh, terror drones. And uh, I tried to, you know, I haven't reviewed the whale yet. There's a special, special uh, episode in the future for that one. But, you know, that's like you said, the broken parts, you know, collecting these as adults. You know, I know there's a lot of guys getting new that are being new into collecting as well. And I even say that if you're getting new, you're at this point, just buy one complete if you can, mm -hmm. um, because, you know, buying childhood, you know, lots, which is, I did that a lot about seven years ago, you know, I got a whole bunch of broken ones and I've been able to piece together vehicles from those lots, or you get one piece away and then you, you know, call up, you know, an online source to, uh, to, to get that, you know, that you know, machine gun shield for your, your night Raven or your, you know, the little uh, ring that goes with the machine gun on the back of the Cobra Condor. So it's. Yeah. Um, uh, fixing broken toys. I think it is kind of a reality of a collector. It's just part of the experience. Uh, you're just gonna, you, you will have to do it. You will have broken toys. And so it's nice to know that uh, at least you've done that. And maybe we'll, we'll do that more because I think that's something that, uh, that would benefit a lot of people, uh, especially as you said, uh, people getting into this uh, new and just coming into the hobby. Um, you know, the, the repair job, that's, that's a part of the experience of a collector. Um, so um uh, it's Cobra Convergence, and and you've picked a really cool one. I'm glad that you showed that off. Um, I, I I was I didn't know that you would have it right handy, which is great. <laughs> it's well done. Um, like I said, this is well in advance of the event. Promo. Uh, yeah. The, <laughs> uh, but um, so uh, but let's talk about Cobra. I guess I guess uh, it, we've got to have our Cobra quota for for this conversation. Absolutely. So, um, so. Uh, I've been asking everyone who who their favorite Cobra character is. So, do you have a particular Cobra character that uh, that you're drawn to the most? It usually doesn't fluctuate. Um, it depends on you know the mood. But usually, my favorite Cobra, the one I always have displayed, is a 1984 hooded Cobra Commander. I have a few of them. I have one that has just the right amount of play and where it had a melted head and <laughs> I had a, I got another head for it and I, I replaced the head, the O-ring it, you know, it's not, it's not perfect by any means. I have an accessory pack laser gun on its back. It's the bright blue one, but it's the one that reminds me the most of the one that I had as a kid. Um, unfortunately, my childhood figures are no longer with me, um, but that that character was, you know, Cobra Commander has such an amazing origin in the comics. He has an amazing storyline in the comics, and he was such a lovable buffoon that still holds up in the cartoon series. So it he is he's the, he's the linchpin of the whole thing. You know, without him, there's no Cobra. Right. Without him, there's like, there's no show, you know, he's got a, you know, he's, he's the, uh, the reason for GI Joe doing what it does. Handsome devil too, I have to say. Um, but, uh, yeah, 
Um, but that, that's that's awesome. Uh, good choice. Good choice. That thing. <laughs> Yeah, that figure had a bit of. I'm a not saying it because of present company. Oh yeah, no, it's no, no, it's true. fine. It's it's slow. no. <laughs> you're, um, I no, I got your PayPal before we started. That your kickback will be on the way. Um, but, um, <laughs> that figure had uh, a bit of a mystique uh, back in the '80s because it wasn't at retail. Uh, that was a mail away figure. That's the only way you could yep. get it. So, um, I didn't have. I didn't own one at the time, but friends did uh so it just felt special so that's uh, i i like that choice that's an excellent choice um well we we are uh we're coming close to the end of our time i want to remind everybody one more time uh there will be a link in the description of this video uh go check out uh chaplain's assistance motor pod uh they should have something for cobra convergence 7 up right now um, and, uh, and do check it out and make sure you follow, make sure you keep up with what they do. It's a fun show. Uh, the episode titles, great. The, the, the name of the show is great. Um, what I like to do, uh, to wrap up is basically turn the floor over to you, uh, for any closing thoughts or comments that you would like to give to, uh, our fair viewers. Uh, thank you to everybody that's going to check out my show for the first time. And thank you to everybody that's returning to check out my show for Cobra Convergence. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. It is going, I think I'm looking at my subject matter right now and I already have some fun ideas and some things that I want to talk about with it. Um, I'm really, it's really tertiary related to the theme, but it was... <laughs> But, you know, when you got a crowbar, you got to use it. Um, and when you have a cobra ring neck, you got to review it. Uh, so I hope you guys check it out. I have no idea what the lead in is going to be at at time of this recording, but I can definitely assure you that it will definitely be a closer, fun look at the cobra ring neck. And uh, can't wait to, if anybody wants to kick, kick back your thoughts or reviews of it, um, wherever you listen to the podcast. I know there's some buzz about the ring neck. So I, I think, I, I think that'll be a great one. Also uh, the, the theme is more of a guideline than a rule. So, you know, there's <laughs> wiggle room, wiggle room. Um, but anyways, uh, thank you, Gary. And thank, thank you for talking with me. Thank you for being in Cobra Convergence seven. I will remind everybody one more time, uh, link in the description. Uh, and I really hope, I hope you have fun this year. Uh, and I hope everyone has fun checking out your show. Thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank you. And we will see you soon. <laughs>